Hey babes, welcome back to Milf with Cookies. I am your virtual boo and full-time Milf Vixty. If you're new here, welcome to the family. If you're returning, of course, you know you're always welcome and thank you so much for your support, your love, and your generosity of giving me your time. All right, today is part two of caring for the cookie. I hope you're ready for this ride, honey. We're about to get all up in the business, okay? So are you ready? Get set and let's talk. here you might as well go ahead and subscribe okay and when you do subscribe don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified each and every time I drop a video because y'all already know auntie ain't gonna let y'all know when I do that so please hit the notification bell cookies and don't forget to share me with your girlfriends <laughs> oh you brought a few with you here tonight wonderful welcome it would also help me out a lot if you hit that like button and share me with your girlfriends all right let's get into the business I'm so glad y'all survived part if one. If y'all weren't here for part one, y'all might as well go ahead and jump over there and review that first before you get into this one and then come back and join us, all right? For those of you who did see part one and came back tonight, I hope y'all got a lot out of that video. It was so much fun to make. I hope y'all try some of the things that I suggested in the last video, okay? That one thing with the, um, the bottle when you're putting it with the warm water after you pee, you want to rinse your vulva. A wonderful lady. It's like giving your vulva a, a, a shower. It's like giving it a shower. I mean, my God, I love that, okay? After I pee, I wipe, I get my little bottle, and I give it a shower. I feel so refreshed after that. I hope y'all tried that. Comment below if you tried that, if you implemented that into your cookie care routine. I'd love to hear from y'all. All right, so tonight's video, we're gonna jump right on in now, ladies, okay? We're gonna first start off with the shaving. I'm not sure how many, people, how many of y'all shave still. I don't. I mean, I shave my legs, my arms, okay? But I don't shave my chocha. I don't. Um, I don't know why, but I just don't. I don't find that it gets as close of a shave. It's not baby soft and smooth as it would have waxed. And I love getting my chocha waxed. But anyways, I digress. We're going to talk about shaving, okay? When you shave down there. Well, you know what? Okay, no. I, I take that back. This is for if you shave, if you wax, if you laser, if you sugar. But if you're still keeping that bush between your thighs, ladies, you're still welcome. I just want to bless y'all with a little something for those ingrowns. Because you still will get those if you wax, sugar, or laser. You may be prone to ingrown hair. But tonight is just not about the ingrown hairs and the shaving, waxing, and all of that good stuff. We're also going to talk about um, vaginal dryness. But you know, I'm here for it all. So, let's just jump right into the... Um, Ingrown hairs first. Now, if y'all don't know what ingrown hairs are or how it happens, it happens after the hair has been removed from either of the methods I previously talked about and the hair starts to grow back. And instead of the hair growing out and away from your skin, it curls up and wants to go back inside. Now, this can happen anywhere you shave, ladies. But the hair that's most prone to it is around your vulva. And the reason that is is because it's coarse and curly. Well, I mean, some people's hair is down there. Well, it's more coarse than the hair that's on your head or anywhere else on your body, okay? So if you don't tame them or get them under control, they can become a lot painful and get infected and cause scarring. So we got to tackle this, ladies, tonight, okay? Now, like I said, I don't normally shave my bikini area. <laughs> I get her waxed. Although, like I said, you still can get ingrown hairs for waxing. And I very rarely have had the issue, but I've had the issue, okay? And that's as of late. Now, I didn't go get waxed yet, but when I do get waxed, I don't really have that problem. But I've had to shave because of this coronavirus, okay? My wax lady had closed down. As y'all already know, a lot of stuff was closed down. So you had to improvise. So yes, I shaved. And my God, I would never do that again, okay? I got ingrown hairs. I haven't seen an ingrown hair since... I don't know. It's been like a decade. So when I got this ingrown hair, I was walking like a freaking cowboy. And it was not pretty. I did not feel sexy at all. So tonight, ladies, let me just help y'all out with something that I had to try. I don't know where I found it from. Oh, I was on YouTube, of course. 
and I came across this video about this uh, one product. I'm sure there are many products out there, ladies, and please, let me give this disclaimer real, real quick. As y'all already know from part one, y'all know I am not a teacher. I'm not a science teacher, no kind of teacher, okay? I'm not in the medical field. Anything that I talk about or discuss is from my own personal experience and through loads of research, okay? So whatever I bring to you is something that I've tried or I've experienced or I've read about thoroughly. Okay, I ain't gonna sit up here and just be talking to y'all and just bullshit y'all. I'm gonna give y'all some real tea on some stuff that I've tried, okay, that I've experienced, okay, or that I've read and done some very thorough research. And I'm not talking about reading one article. I'm going all across things, okay? I'm going talking to doctors and all of that good stuff because I want to bring y'all some real good stuff because I watch the videos, some videos, and some of them can be just very basic. So I want to dive in and just give y'all just a little bit more just to boost, you know, your knowledge, all right? So there is a product that I have tried that I came across. It's called Fur, and we're going to get into that right now. All right, so now don't call me crazy, but she is real, real cute, okay? It's a called Fur. It came in this little box right here. I'm not sure if you can see it, okay? This is Fur. Okay, this is the box that she came in, but it's out of the box now, so I digress with that. This is her right here. She is so cute. Ain't she cute? Ah, I love this little bottle, okay? But now you see it comes with this dropper, ladies. You want to be really, really careful. And please don't make sure your hands are um, dry, free from any kind of oils or lotions. Because this bad boy would be very difficult to operate if not, okay? Um, yeah. She comes with a little dropper. And make sure when you're using these droppers too, ladies, that the dropper does not touch your skin. Because you're putting um, all kinds of like other bacteria or whatever. And it goes back into that bottle. And it will contaminate your whole, um, your whole bottle here okay so anyways a little dropper so it's really cute um what i do with this let's get into how i use this bad boy when i first started using this it's just it really started to help right it's away. concentrated so a little bit of this goes a very long way it should last you a very long time now it also comes with this little um finger mitten here it goes on your fingers like this okay and you use this when you're in the shower okay this part right here this is going to be used to exfoliate the areas where you just shaved or you're prone to um get the ingrown hairs if you already have ingrown hairs you're going to use it there as well it has really gotten rid of all the bumps the ingrown hairs and all the irritation that i experienced down there after i shaved now you can also use this anywhere you shave, ladies. Like if you shave your um your lip area, your chin, um your arms, legs, wherever you would get the irritation, you can use this stuff. Okay, so it's not just for um the vaginal or vulva area. Let me know in the comments what products you use for your ingrown hair. Okay, and if you do get that, let me know what your experience has been with ingrown hair. You know, sharing is caring over here on MWC. So let's get into it, okay? So now, like I said, you're going to use the finger mitt in the shower. Once you get out of the shower, okay, of course, you're going to patch your vulva dry. Let's not forget that, ladies, in part one, we talked about that. Get out of the shower. You want to make sure your vulva is really dry. And then it's when you're going to apply um, your ingrown hair serum, whichever one you use. Like I said, I used fur, okay? So I will get the dropper out. I put it on the areas that I just shaved. And I just rub her all in. Okay. Now with the finger mitt, they do suggest that you use that three to five times a week. You don't have to do that daily, but you want to use the serum daily. And you're using it daily because it's a preventative measure, like I told you before. It um, prevents the ingrown hairs, the irritation, or any kind of razor burn if you use a razor. And like I said, I, I shave. So I would use this, definitely use this every day after I've gotten my wax done to prevent any ingrown hairs or any kind of irritation down there. Now, I'm not sure how many of you are really keen on like ingredients, but um, you can go over that too. I'll tell you the ingredients of fur. Let me get my notes. You know, I love my notes. Okay. Um, so the key ingredients are coconut oil. I know that's really, really big in the beauty industry today. Everybody uses coconut oil because it's so pure, so natural and very good um, for your skin. Um, softening ingrown hair so they can easily slide out of the skin. Very important. All right. Tea tree oil. All right. Tea tree oil. Another um, great um, benefit in the beauty industry these days. Um, prevents ingrowns and speeds up the skin's healing process. Love tea tree oil. Um... Tamanu oil, soften skin and promote new healthy cell growth. Chamomile extract calms and soothes the skin. And it's also gluten-free and is vegan, okay? 
awesome product. I'm telling you, y'all should try that. They have a website, um, fur.com, all right? Um, I'm also going to leave a link for you in the description box in case you want to try it out, all right? Awesome, 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 awesome. Now, some other tips I want to give to you ladies that shave, okay? This is for my shaving ladies, okay? Now, when you do shave, you want to let your shaving cream sit for a while so that it soaks and softens the hair so that you're about to shave off, okay? Uh, let it soak into the skin for a few minutes, okay? You want to use a warm compress before you shave, all right? Instead of this, I would recommend shaving your bikini or pubic area in the shower because that, like, you already are under the warm water. So you're already letting it bask in the warm water, okay? So, instead of a compress... Just use the warm water from your shower. I recommend shaving in the shower, okay? But you don't want to shave dry. That would definitely cause a lot of irritation and ingrown hairs, ladies. So we should already know that, okay? And you only use a razor that is sharp enough, okay, and dedicated to that area. I wouldn't use like a regular shaver, a regular shaver, okay, to shave that area. You want to use those bikini shavers because it's specifically designed to be used down there, okay? So definitely stay away from regular sharp regular razors okay um electric razors they say are best for the bikini area okay you want to shave in the direction the hairs are growing not against it okay you don't shave against the hairs you shave with the hairs the same direction they're growing in okay um rinse your blade after every stroke now you do that because it gets rid of any shavings that are clogging the blades to get you a closer shave, okay? So when you shave one, you rinse it. Then you can continue shaving. Rinse, shave, rinse the blade off, ladies, okay? After each stroke, okay? They recommend that you don't tweeze the bikini area. Now, I know I've had that done, but not by myself. I've always had that done. Like if I'm waxing and she didn't get all the hair, she may tweeze a little bit. Only let a professional do that. If you're a professional, please go ahead and do that. Because what that does is if you shave, if you tweeze down there and you don't get it right, okay, that hair that you're trying to tweeze, you may not get all of it. So you're leaving some down there and that can cause an ingrown hair. So stay away from tweezing your pubic area, okay? Um, don't stretch your skin when you're shaving. That allows the tips of the remaining hair to shrink back into your skin and grow there. Another reason for ingrown hairs, ladies. When you're shaving, don't stretch your skin. Just shave naturally. Don't pull or tug on your skin while you're shaving your pubic area, okay? And I'm imagining that will go with any parts of, you know, your body that you're shaving. Don't stretch the skin while you're shaving, okay? Ingrown hairs, ladies. You want to try to exfoliate before you shave. I have found this will be so beneficial when I'm shaving my legs. To exfoliate first, apply a scrub first before you shave, okay? Um, because dead skin cells traps ingrown hairs. That's the benefit. I mean, that's a reason why they give to do that. But I found that when you exfoliate prior to you shave, oh, so soft, okay? And a better shave. Okay, even when you're going to get waxed, I would recommend that you go ahead and exfoliate down there before you go to your wax girl. Okay, I'm telling you, it will, it's a great benefit. Not only does it prevent ingrown hairs, it just comes out so much smoother. So exfoliate before you shave, ladies. And remember to moisturize right after you get out of that shower, after you've shaven down there. Moisturize, okay? After you shave any part of your body, you want to moisturize afterwards, okay? And you want to use a serum meant to treat ingrown hairs, like I said, fur. That's my fur. Okay? Get you, get you some serum to apply after you've shaven or waxed or sugared, okay, or lasered, okay? Use you some serum to prevent the ingrown hairs. And it also helps to get really, really smooth down there, ladies. All right, so now, uh, let's talk about dryness, vaginal dryness. I know many of y'all might not experience this, but I have read that people as young as 23, okay, 18, experience vaginal dryness. It's not, it does not just come from aging, ladies. So don't think that, okay, I'm not going to ever experience that because I'm not old, whatever. It doesn't always necessarily mean that you, that you have to be old to experience vaginal dryness. People experience vaginal dryness for many, many, many reasons. It could be health, it could be the nutrition, and of course, yes, it can be age. People who are premenopausal or already in menopause suffer from vaginal dryness. I mean, vaginal dryness can happen to all of us at any stage of our lives, okay? It can be due to you're just not into him, you're not in the mood, stress, you're not sexually aroused. 
not enough foreplay, medical reasons such as chemotherapy, full and partial hysterectomies for all, some of us that have experienced that, cold and allergy medications, and taking antidepressants. Okay, so yes, medicines can cause you to be dry down there. Now, as we talked about in part one, there are certain things you don't put down there in your vulva area because those things can also cause vaginal dry. Harsh soaps and washing powders can all contribute to vaginal dryness. So we not only have to be careful of the things that we consume in our bodies, but the things that we use outside of our bodies, on our bodies, in our vulva area, okay? Now, vaginal dryness can be so freaking frustrating, I know, especially if you're into the guy that you're with, all right? And you're all up in the mood and you're getting all the stimulation, your mind is into it, you're into it, and it's just like, okay, what the freak? Get with me, girlfriend. Let's get this thing working, okay? That can be so frustrating and so intimidating and make you feel some type of way. So let's get into that and how we're going to cure this bad boy or prevent it. Now, if your age is 50 to 59 and you're watching this video, you are more prone to vaginal dry. And since I'm nearing 50, yay, I am doing lots of research and taking all kinds of precautions, okay? So I'm here for it all. I'm going to share everything I find out with y'all. I mean, who wants painful sex? Nobody wants painful sex. Sex is meant to be enjoyed. Now, I'm not just talking to my old ladies, okay, here tonight, okay? And when I say old, I mean vintage, okay? I mean seasoned, okay? Such as myself, okay? Young folks, y'all get vaginal dryness too, so, okay? <laughs> so, anyways, now, through my research, according to Women's Health, about 17% of women, 18 to 50, experience vaginal dryness during sex too. So this video right here is meant for all of us. Now, of course, there are a lot of over-the-counter remedies. There's also things that we can change in our diets, ladies, that can um, help us battle vaginal dryness. Of course, you want to drink more water. That's a natural lubricant. Things you may want to try eating, fish. Now, I know what you're thinking. You, When you eat fish, you might smell like fish. Not true, ladies. Please stop it, okay? But you want to definitely try to include more fish in your Especially salmon, mackerel, and tuna. These are great choices as they're high in fatty acids. And fatty acids help aid in producing, okay, more juices, okay? Wet, wet. <laughs> Sesame seeds and sunflower seeds also are high in fatty acids. But any foods that are high in fatty acids will help you um, produce more lubricant. Oh, yes. There. Include these things that is in your diet. I intend to do that. They are very helpful. Another thing that I have chosen to include in my diet daily, okay, this is, this is an over-counter medication. Not really medication. I think it's a vitamin, okay? It's um, Cebu Omega-7 C buckthorn oil. This one is a thousand milligrams high um, potency. Okay, it's great for skin, hair, and nail support, heart health. Many healthy benefits in this omega 7 buckthorn. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. I hope you can. Hopefully, it will focus for you. But I will include this down in the description box for you if you want to try it. This is, it has so many health benefits in this one bottle, ladies. Um, I take maybe a couple pills a day, and it really lubricates. Okay? It lubricates everywhere. I mean, sometimes, sometimes I have to swallow more or whatever. But anyways, when you are sexually active or plan on being sexually active and you want to be really, really lubricated down there, this is a great thing to add to your diet, okay? If you suffer from any kind of vaginal dryness on a daily, that is a good thing you can add to your diet. Any kind of a on the vagina. Now, ladies, when we're having sex, okay, please make sure that you are peeing before and after you have sex, okay? Uh, when you're having sex, first of all, it just clears um, away any bacteria or anything you got going on down there, okay? Because this acid or whatever from the pee, the urine or whatever. And please make sure you're showering your vulva with your little water bottle, okay? The lukewarm water. Remember I told you about the little bottle that you squirt there after you pee, okay? So you want to pee before you have sex. And you want to pee after. Now the benefits for peeing after. During sex, bacteria can get all up in your urethra. Remember the urethra is the hole that's right above the vaginal opening, the hole that you pee from. It's the urethra. So during sex, bacteria gets all up in there. So you want to make sure you flush that out. So after sex, please, you can cuddle for a little bit, but make sure you get up and go use the bathroom, okay? And don't forget to wipe front to back.
and give her a little shower afterwards. Now, when I say give her a little shower afterwards, I'm not saying you have to jump right to the shower and start cleaning all up in your vajay -jay. Again, ladies, please, we don't put anything up our vaginas, okay? We don't. It's a clean, it's a self-cleaning organ. It cleanses itself through its own vaginal discharge. Yes. When you're having sex, especially if it's unprotected, you're getting all that steam up there. So you just think that I have got to get all up in there and get all of that out. No, no, ladies. No, no. The vagina will clean itself. Just make sure you're cleaning all around the vulva, getting all that yucky up out of there, okay? Clean in between your lips. Clean under the um, clitoral hood. Clean all of that out. Clean the mound. All of that. Clean all of that out. But don't stick anything up your vagina. It does not need to be douched, okay? You can stand in the shower and let all that stuff run out, okay? But don't stick anything up in there. You can also use your feminine wash. Use feminine washes, okay? Make sure they're natural, they're organic, um, and they're free of any kind of dyes, any kind of perfumes, okay? There's no need to use all of that stuff inside your vagina, okay? Just outside on the vulva area, ladies. Now, I'm so glad y'all stuck with me to the end of our time tonight. There's one thing that I want to tell you guys about that sometimes it can be a little uh, uncomfortable to talk about. But when we're self-pleasuring ourselves, okay, ladies, please make sure your hands are clean, okay? Make sure your hands are clean and your toys, if you use toys, are clean, okay? The same way you wash your vulva, you want to clean your sex toys. You want to make sure your hands are clean before you're touching your vagina, okay? Um, when you're using your sex toys, you want to make sure, like I said, they are clean before and they are clean after, okay? So you can use your feminine washes, your unscented, gentle mild soaps to clean your toys all right ladies so please let's keep our vulvas clean and let's remember that our vagina cleanses itself i hope that you have enjoyed our videos part one part two all right please comment below anything that you've gotten out of these videos anything you'd like to add to share you know sharing is caring here so let's spread the love please like this video it really helps me and pushes me up in the YouTube business, all right? If you haven't done it, please subscribe. Share this video with your girlfriends. Hit that share button down below or you can take a picture. Now post that bad boy up on Instagram and Facebook and don't forget to tag your girl, all right? In the next video, we're going to be talking about wiping our ass, okay? How do we do that properly? Yes, there is a proper way to wipe your ass, ladies. So, until our next video, subscribe, like, share. Mwah. Now, if y'all don't know what ingrown hairs are, they are, it is, it happens when...